Okay. So we, we have a Gobi document is inside DevCon 16 both and the title of the both. So this is not a presentation. My idea is to get feedback from you and, and uh, the main goal really is to get people to work for me. So uh, until now, I'm pretty much the uh, only maintainer of DevCI. So we had lots of contributions from uh, Martin Pitt, which, the, which is the auto package test maintainer, and he works on the Ubuntu uh, Foundation team or whatever they call it. And he's uh, he also put together uh, a DevCI instance that looks like ci.tevin.net for Ubuntu, but they use some. They had uh, a previous infrastructure for running the test, so they are using only the web interface. So he contributed lots of things to, to make sure uh, you could do that. And also uh, Brandon Fairchild, which was a Summer of Code student in 2014. So, and he, he helped me to improve a lot on you know, the DevCI web interface. So most of the stuff we see now is his work. So for those who don't know, DevCI is a continuous integration system for Debian and derivatives. So it can also be extended to do other stuff. If you implement other backends, you can even run any arbitrary thing with it. So right now, just all the backends run auto package tests, but you can also uh, extend to do other things. And it's what powers ci.tevin.net running auto package test, test suite. So a uh, little plug here, if you are interested in the topic of uh, testing Debian package, that there's going to be a buff on that um, Thursday uh, 1400 on Wednesday 13. So we'll be discussing issues related to writing the tests and uh, how testing tools and techniques and all that, that stuff. And here we are talking more about the, the other side of the infrastructure that runs the tests. So running the tests is for, is for Thursday. Now, uh, since uh, I got Brandon to work on Summer of Code uh, really uh, early in the project, so I had to make sure that he could run the CI on his machine. So uh, as far as I can tell, it's really well documented how, how you, you, you can run your own instance locally. Let's see. Okay. So just to make sure I did this before we started. So I cleaned up my 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 tree. So here is the, the source tree of DevCI and there is docs hacking, which tells you how to set up. So there is some uh, dependencies you have to install. So the main thing you need to have running is RabbitMQ, which is the uh, message broker that uh, relays the message between the, the DevCI master and worker. We'll get to that in a, in a moment. So usually in a developed machine, you want to disable that to not have that running all the time and only start it when you want to test. Uh, there's a typo here, as you can see. I already have that running. So first thing is to make it. It's, it's just going to build, um, build the documentation and um, create some things to the JavaScript stuff that's used on the web UI and all. So uh, the architecture can be inspected looking at proc file. Proc file is a is a configuration file for uh, process workers, process runners. So in this case, we are running one that's called Foreman. So it's going to 
for each line of the uh, in this file it is going to spawn the process given by this command line so basically it's so let's see that again so we have a web server in this case in the production environment you you just use Apache or whatever you have but we have one local for testing so we ha you have worker nodes which is the, the, the thing that actually runs the test. You can have as many as you want. Uh, the collector and the indexer are two demons that run on the master server. Um, the indexer, the collector receives results from the worker after they run the test, and the indexer processes that and generates the web interface. So now we have it running. If we go here, you see, uh, okay, so you, you have an empty, um, empty environment, but before doing anything, I will just do a quick, so, so uh, the configuration directory, every file ending with .conf will be loaded. So we want here just for testing. So we are uh, just uh, demonstrating running the FCI for multiple architectures. These are, are the ones we are running on ci.dev.net right now. And the fake backend is a, fake, a backend that does, doesn't do anything, so it's not going to run out of package test for real. You just generate fake results for us to test. So if I restart everything, so we, ha we now have it running. And I need another terminal. So you can, if you want to hack on the web interface, it's use, is use, useful to have fake data. So this script here will generate uh, fake submissions for you. So here you, ha you see the, here you see the worker doing the work, running the tests here. And then here the indexer receives the results and the updates the web interface. So the web interface will auto reload every five minutes, but in this case we want to reload. We can generate a little more data here. So we can do this as many times as we want. It will just run fake tests. And then the indexer is receiving the results. So now you, you start to have useful data. And um, here you have, you have the news uh, stream. So it only generates items here when the, the package change status. So if package always fail, fails, you, you won't be bothered with uh, the package fail 100 times. So just when it changes status, you get a, a so it's fairly uh, okay to subscribe to this feed. I do that and not many noise, not much noise. Uh, it's, it's really useful to uh, detect stuff breaking the archive. So a few days ago I up update, uploaded a broken Ruby package so uh, all its previous dependencies came as fail in the feed. So it's useful to know when, when things are broken or get fixed. Um, and here is the is the uh, the same interface you have on the live side. So in this case, I'm using a feature that's probably useful. for people who want to run their own instance. So there is a you, you can uh, set up a white list of packages. So in this case, I'm only running uh, these packages and you can use that, for instance, if you have a, a team, a maintenance team, you, you, only, you want to have a, your own instance to run your packages on, 
on each commit or whatever you want. You can just whitelist your packet. And if, if this file is, execu exec uh, is an executable, it will use the output of that as the whitelist. So you can even uh, use dynamic lists there. Like I want all package with this maintainer email address or something like that. Um, so this is pretty much it. So get get it running from this from scratch. It's pretty easy. So if you are willing to hack on the FCI and help improve the tool, then it should be fairly easy. So as I said in the beginning, this is not supposed to be a talk or a presentation. I, I want to hear from you guys and, and see what are your interests. And so there are a few conversation topics here we, we can use. And so ways to help, you, you can help improve the CI itself. Uh, you can help manage ci.tabian.net, for instance, uh, keeping an eye on, uh, we have a, a mooning instance uh, monitoring stuff in, in the systems and also uh, there is a the status page here there is a status alert which is temporary fails on packages and then looking at those and identifying uh, problems there maybe is a lot is very useful so for instance this package here is failing all the time because there was a change in the archive recently that started to include uh, gpg signatures for uh, upstream sources and then apt cacher ng which is the proxy we, uh, we use on the workers to avoid redownloading dependencies all the time doesn't support that so it's it's not white listed on the so then this package has um is not being tested because uh the package download failed uh, i'm looking at that but in general it's useful to have other would it should be useful to have other people looking at those type of things to make sure we keep up with the uh, evolution of the infrastructure. Um, so things you can do with DevCI, so you can use DevCI as, a, as the full CI system itself, as we do in Debian. You can use only the, the, web, front, the web UI as a front end for auto package test, test data, as Ubuntu does. You can also, as I, show, as I have shown, run only a subset of packages and you, you, if you have a derivative that's almost equal to Debian but have some custom package, you, you can, for instance, run a CI only for your package or for your team if you want to do that. You can do things like build and test on commit. As long as the, the packages are in some repository, that's how you run them. Yeah, I have a question. Um, do you recommend actually using Depsy CI itself if you want to run your own test, or is that just uh, too much? Uh, if you want to run like in the your development machine? Yeah, so I'm working on my package and I want to test if my uh, auto package test actually still works. Uh, would Depsy be a good way of doing that, or is that just overkill? I think it's overkill. Just using auto package test directly is just fine. I mean, I you can do that. You can. I mean, DevCI will give you a few uh, nice things, like it's it manages the test beds automatically for you. So you don't have to know how to create a, a LXC container or a QMU machine. I mean, QMU is not supported yet, but in the case of LXC. Let's turn off my phone. Uh, you just do sudo devci setup and it does cre creates the container for you. So it gives you that, but if you are okay with uh, managing the test bed yourself, you can just use auto package test directly. Uh, 
At the beginning of your demo, uh, I saw that you have a background file in the source list. Mm -hmm. Is that supported as a development environment? It I think it is. Yes. So it don't have much, so just call this script here. Yep. Yeah. So the only thing it's going to do is it will start the RabbitMQ for you. It will Okay, right. So this is more for testing the Debian packages, but you, you can also do that. It's a, a, as a, yeah, so here it's, it's relying on the Debian package, so it's automatically installing the extensions, but uh, if anyone wants to use Vagrant for that, it's, it should be just a matter of taking the, the extra steps in the documentation, automating here should be easy. So another unrelated question is, uh, I'm interested in, so I'm, I'm wondering if uh, DevCI would be a good basis to uh, restart doing uh, archive rebuilds, because there are lots of use cases that's not completely addressed by what the reproducible builds people are, are doing in terms of filing uh, mm -hmm. uh, FDFS bugs. And one thing that uh, I wonder is how, uh, well, first, do you see big reasons not to, not to do that, not to use DevCI as a basis to run uh, just a rebuild farm? Not really. Okay. And one thing I, I saw is that you specified the architectures list. Mm -hmm. uh, how flexible is that? Because typically for archive rebuilds, you probably want to have uh, well unstable testing, but also unstable with custom GCC packages mm -hmm. uh, or stuff like that. Um, is that? So one way to do that is when you When I did this here, you will notice that um, every uh, test request submission has to explicitly state the distribution and the architecture. So for instance, you could have, uh, and the distribution is basically, I don't have this here. Well, you can say, use a distribution like unstable dash GCC six, and then you configure the test bed associated with that distribution with the corresponding source list entries, and that you just work. Anyone, if you don't have live questions, we have questions here. So uh, if you guys are interested, uh, please help taking notes here because it's difficult for me to respond to them and take notes at the same time. So prodding certain packages which have not run despite the input. Yes, yeah, so uh, this is an issue right now. So some, I think there's some bug in the test scheduler that depending on race conditions on the archive updates and some things. So, and sometimes Packages are not being run. And this is something that I would appreciate help on, but uh, it's on my plans to at some point rewrite re the test scheduler to be more robust uh, on the face of this kind of thing. Uh, and also, it would be nice to have, uh, it would be nice to have anyway, a, a way of people like <coughs> kicking a new test, forcing it. So currently, what I do now is when people ping me on IRC, I just uh, schedule a new test for them. I can probably arrange shell access for every DD. Should be able to should, uh, to um,
So uh, yeah, I, I can do that. So there's nice, nice SSH tools that you can create accounts that has limited permissions. So I can just allow every everyone to just request milk tests. That should be doable. Um, right. So I guess I think I hope that responds to the question. Reviewing the queue summary, it's so. I guess it's not linked here anywhere, but there's actually a Moonin instance running. So it's dev ci deb ci debianet slash Moonin. And here you can see the status of the queue. So I guess people have been busy during DebCamp, DebConf and DebCamp because the queue is really high now. So in the past few weeks, we have a really uh, quiet scenario. So you can see here for, ah, okay, the resolution was not. What? horizontal scrolling why not? Okay. So you can see here that the, the queue was really okay on AMD64 for the first for the past few days. Then that conf starts and we have all that. So what happens there I, I, if you have a like a base package that have lots of reverse dependencies and also transitive re, uh, reverse dependencies so if if, if you have a new GCC upload, then everything gets tested again. Or a libc upload. And so I here you can see the state of the queue as far as um, uh, waiting time. So if the queue is really high, you know that your package is not going to be tested really quickly. But if the queue is empty, you know that the... Uh, you get results really soon. And you can see that ARM64 has a basically a horizontal line on the queue because we only have two boxes running tests. That's sponsored by Linaro, my employer. We have two, I don't remember the name of the board, or of the server boards, but they are running 24 seven. But they, they are not able to keep up with the, with the load. And for AMD64, we have 10 uh, Amazon EC2 instances. And so they, they are uh, able to consume the, that queue really uh, reasonably fast. So you can, ha you can have the, the status of the whole system here. I usually remove to be able to show this. So, oh yeah, one of the ARM64 machines is currently broken. I can't figure out why. I didn't have the time to look at it. So th this is package being processed by worker. So whenever there's a vertical green line, it means that the work is busy. And here is the number of process the of packages that have been processed by the worker in the last, well, each time slice is five minutes. So you can see. So here I, I used to, to monitor if there is some problem with the worker. So in this case, it's very clear that there's something wrong here. And I know about that already. And I don't know if the person who asked the question if that answers or not. Um, there is a marker to say that whether each package is already scheduled or not, but I, I don't think that shows up in the web interface yet. I had a branch with um, with uh, a status page like this showing the current queue, but uh, I was never able to finish that. But at, at least, at least you, you can know how the system is looking at this. It, this uses the Debian single sign-on with uh, client certificate and all that. So uh, all DBs and VMs should have access. I mean, anyone with a Debian SSO account has access. Can you explain a little bit um, 
in, at the Ubuntu website, I can see why a package was uh, tested or retested. Um, is the same mechanism working on CI.debian uh, uh, It's not. So, yeah, as I said, can in the beginning, they use a different reschedule? infrastructure, so they, they already have had. Um, they already had their own infrastructure for running tests, they, and so Martin just is just using the, the web UI there. So it's a few a few details are different, like this one. So you, sorry, you you mean uh, why a package was run like this? So here you you, you have. Uh, w why the run was done. So d in this case of this package, I'm retrying because the last attempt failed with an uh, infrastructure problem. You can also have, let's see, dev site self. Yeah, so in Ubuntu it shows up at, uh, at the website. Maybe that's a nice, nice feature. Where? So in the overview of your package, I think it shows up why. Here? Yeah, so that that information already on this overview. Okay. Then you don't, well, nice right. to have. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe they have a patch there that never gets way back. I can look at that. Still about the, the queuing, uh, is is it just uh, first in first out, or it, is there a way to tune that to prioritize a specific? Uh, it's first in first out, but I think we added since the beginning. Um, priority parameter, maybe not. But so uh, RabbitMQ supports priorities, so it should be easy to just add a new parameter to the RabbitMQ calls that that puts uh, jobs in the queue. I, I don't think we are using that now, but it should be a few lines, a few lines of patch to do that. I have another question, um, maybe in, uh, slightly unrelated to Dep CI itself, but. Uh, Ubuntu is using the outcome of Auto Package Tester as gating for proposed to the real archive. Mm -hmm. um, how far are we in Debian to do the same? We are supposed to. I had conversations with the release team last DebConf about that, but um, I guess life happened and then we, <laughs> we, we weren't able to go ahead with that. But there is the idea to do that, and uh, DebCI even already has. It already generates hinge block, uh, uh, Britney block hints for that, but that's not really right at not right now because we only want to block regressions and not packages that have failed their test since forever. And I guess you need to migrate to a Debian.org machine. Yes, that's another thing. So basically, what happened was uh, I probably wrongly assumed that having DevCI pr package as a proper Debian package was the way to go, and it turns out that it's not the way to go. So I have to figure out how to manage the, the, the master instance especially, not having root on the machine. Because since I, I, I use package, so I upload uh, this stuff for to Jesse backports and then upgrade using app, you know, as you as you usually would do, but of course, for good reasons, DSA doesn't want to have everyone having root on their machines. Then, uh, yes, I just need to plan and, and do things in a way that I can manage with a regular user account. But is that limiting to actually use it for the release? I don't think uh, so. Uh, the release team is, is okay as it is with, uh, as long as the data is correct. So the, the, these Britney hints file is not 
is not what we need currently in ideas net i or someone else that wants to help needs to to get the I mean, this only regression here anyone else <coughs> any other question here Can you can you bring the microphone? Maybe it's still related to the our current implementation. Is it possible to get an email if something fails? Or would that be <sighs> nice to be implemented? An email. So you have a Because in the moment I have something like eighty packages of them uh, are okay. sixty uh, I have CI and I always have to check they are still in a good condition. Right. It would be nice to have something like a then auto bug or email or something like that. Right. So you, you can subscribe to the RSS feed. Okay. So that, that works for me. I subscribe to the whole feed for the entire of Debian, but even that is not so much. Uh, the information is also presented in the tracker, in the developer. How it's called? Uh, the DPO, the Debian Developer Package Overview, also displays uh, CI test. So if, if you go to your page, if the list of your package, you have a column with CI yeah, results. I, I know that, but I'm, okay. I'm, I mean, you I want like to be I notified like to get explicitly. To get okay. Be pushed if something fails. Is that that? Is that something that lots of people want? I don't know. <laughs> Please raise your hand if you would like to get emails on your package fails. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess it, it should be fairly easy to like email package name at package.debian.org. Yeah. Just uh, I think that's something to be better addressed in a more centralized tool. I mean, is is our tracker or yes. UDD? UDD works better for team for groups of packages, but uh, yeah, I don't think it makes really make, makes a lot of sense to have CI re-implement well, implement something specifically for that. Uh, UDD has a um, RSS feed, but it doesn't include CI. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Anyone else? Ten minutes? Okay, so we still have ten minutes. If, if you are interested, I can show you how I currently manage the Amazon infrastructure that runs the tests. <sighs> so so there is a <coughs> configuration repository on Collabmate called Debian CI config which is a chef repository. So that's other <laughs> another issue for the DSA migration because they use Puppet. But that, that's okay because since I packaged everything, so the, the chef stuff just put a configuration file there and uh, we install this list of packages, so it's pretty easy. Um, I don't... How much time that takes? So I use Vagrant to um, simulate a production environment. So I bring up a master machine and a worker machine. So this is, is using a tool that I wrote to use um, 
use chef without having a chef server. It's called Shake. So you, you can um, push your stuff to your nodes without having a chef server to run. First, because there is no chef server in Debian. And second, because I mean, for small infrastructures, you don't necessarily need the overhead of having a centralized server. And then uh, you have a lot of commands here. So hey, converge is basically applying all the chef recipes to the nodes and should be really fast if everything is already done. Yeah, so there is all, all the, the machines are in the desi uh, desired state. And you can use this too as a shortcut to log into the machine. So you can inspect the status. Oh yeah, I reinstalled everything yesterday, so it doesn't know about anything. You can schedule tests, so um, this is fast. Hmm? Maybe something is broken here. And you can use the systemd stuff to, oh, there's no worker here, so I don't need to do So you can use the systemd log stuff to see what's happening. I think the RabbitMQ has some issue here, I don't know why. Probably just do live on the real server. So here you see the result coming. This is what I used to generate some of those mooning graphs here. Um, yeah, so there's a new result just came here. It's not, it's not that fun to keep watching that. Uh, yeah, but basically it's, uh, the worker has a, a have a DebCI worker daemon that stays there doing its thing, so it's not very complicated. And the master has a, has a few, so it's now generating the HTML here. And it's also doing new tests, uh, scheduling new test runs, that side batch. And that's pretty much it. I think uh, we are almost out of time. Uh, does anyone have more questions? If not, I think we can finish here. And thanks for coming. I hope I see patches from a few people in the, in the future. Thank you.